I'm on today with Del Farrell. She runs a fitness site. She does online coaching. She now offers one book. She has her personal blog at icecreamgal.com. And uh, she's trying to currently expand her services and get back into training after taking about a four and a half month uh, trip traveling, I think it was. So thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it, Del. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just appreciate you being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'll jump right into these questions. Uh, I know people are interested to hear about you. You've done a lot of work with like people that are real popular in the fitness industry. You've done some competitions, but um, I kind of wanted to get into where you were when you started trying to get into like online and create an online presence, maybe to possibly sell coaching or a product. So where were you, like physical location, mentally, emotionally, like what was going on in your life when you decided I want to do something online for business? Okay, so um, the first like two years of being a trainer, I I just um, did like boot camps and um, worked in a personal training studio. Then when I changed gyms, mm -hmm. um, I, ha I had like a little break in between, and I changed gyms, and I went to um, changing the game in Vegas, like a fitness okay. conference with my coach, and um, that's what really made me think that. I don't just want to be like just the PT in the gym. Um, I can help a lot more people and um, um, have a more consistent income if I sort of branch out and um, put myself out of my comfort zone. And yeah. so that's when I started like making sure I had a website and started um, working on my social media presence. Um, and then I also got help from Dick Talens, co-founder of Photocracy. Oh, yeah. So he is the one who actually um, helped me f for my blog, Ice Cream Gal. He actually made that. Um, he helped me, like, craft my origin story because people want to know who you are and, like, be able to relate to you. So yeah. um, he, um, really, like, having a mentor really got me started. Um, so, yeah, Dick Talens... Um, wow. He sort of made me made me write, yeah. um, like gave me sort of the bl blueprint of what to do, and kept me on track. So, wow, yeah, that's, um, a, good, that's a good mentor to have. Dick Talens is you know yes. creator of photography for everyone that doesn't know. And you said changing the game. This is interesting. I didn't, I didn't, maybe I didn't see this on your blog, but uh, so before before changing the game, were you totally just like I'm just going to train people in a gym? I I did um like a little bit of social media then and but I I had no intention of writing anything okay. um one of the people that spoke at um changing the game was Roman John Roman Allo. oh yeah yeah um yeah so he's been a great help as well um he's like I really like his style of writing and um that made me realize like you you don't have to be just the boring like informational um, type of fitness writer, you can, you know, have a bit of fun with it and make it enjoyable for the readers. Yeah. And um, because I, I find like a lot of it, I'm like, oh, it's it's generic. Like the information that you find, it's already been said a thousand times. But mm -hmm. you can sort of make it if, if you are really authentic and talk about your story and how it relates to you, then people that's more what people want to know mm -hmm. rather than just dry information mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I i know i guess fitness or excuse me it was ice cream gal the one where you're talking about how you got into it, if it fits your macros and then uh, you know going from super clean eating to if it fits your macros to kind of a balance where you're like okay this makes sense for my lifestyle and you kind of tell your story with it instead of just like do this don't do this mix these two yeah yeah and it's amazing how many emails i get from like my exact demographic, like my exact target market that are saying, oh my God, like, thank you for writing this. It's, it sounds like you were in the exact um, place I am in now yeah. and like, help me. How can I start coaching with you? Which is, I've had like so many emails like that in the past two weeks Yeah. Um, since I've gotten more media coverage and it's just crazy like how many people like once you put your information out there, people are like, oh yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. 
And that's good. It sounds like you want to help people, but also from a selfish business perspective, if people can relate to you that much, it sounds like people are knocking down your door to get coaching. So yeah, that's pretty. And at the end of the day, like it's it is a business. Like you have to want to help people. Mm -hmm. So you definitely do. So through that blog, um, my next question that kind of ties in: What was your initial game plan? Was it to build your online presence from Ice Cream Gal, or did you start your boot camp website, the Del Pro Fitness one, uh, separately? Like, who were you trying to target when you originally started getting online? Um, well, with my um, Del Pro website that I haven't updated in forever, um, <laughs> I, the I, I just had that because um, I wanted a contact form for my to sign up for my boot camp. So mm-hmm. after changing the game in Vegas, I came back and that was in between the time where I was like, I wasn't at a gym. I just left my other one because I was like, I moved um, like where I was living. Mm-hmm. So um, I started that boot camp, like an outdoor boot camp. And then the website was just the f- sign up form. Um, and I, I wanted to have like something to write. I, I had like um, flyers that I handed out, but I yeah. it was mostly word of mouth. But I I needed a website, so um, apart from just Facebook, <laughs> uh, and that was sort of the the boot camps was a, a great way of um, getting one on one clients. So from that, I had clients when I started at my um, at the gym, okay. which was like a couple probably like six weeks later, mm-hmm. um, and then. I realized that like I have a lot of because I travel a lot I have a lot of contacts overseas and um, it's people always ask me questions like well, where can I find out more about this and rather than just like giving sending them to other sites now I can say okay come to my blog and there's information about that so um, yeah I, I figured that I needed some form of content so okay so at um, first you were just using it like that's not- at first we were just using it so people could see what you're about and then get some of your expertise uh, without having to actually like contact you and sell or see you in person. So at first you weren't necessarily trying to sell anything off your own. Like that. Yeah, I was just trying to um, build an audience and even if you don't know like where, like what your plan is going to be, it's good to just have something there so um, it starts, so pe- people start like knowing who you are and now like I went to Kansas City Fitness Summit and um, I love Alan Aragon like in the oh, research yeah. review and I'm, I met him for the first time there and he's like oh you're Del Farrell I read your um, article on such and such I'm like oh my god you read my article what, <laughs> like, what? yeah he's big wow Alan Aragon yeah he's huge in fitness yeah so it's and it's good to have like if you if you write good content and mm. Um, people like that share it like and you um, build like some sort of respect within the industry then that's gonna like push you further because then when you bring a product or something out then um, people will go to them and say oh is this any good like do you know this person and then you can like they can say yes or no (laughs) yeah so yeah word of mouth is big (laughs) and yeah especially if they're gonna you know, give word of mouth for your products or throw it on their email list, which is very big <laughs> for like someone like that. Um, which kind of goes to the next one for us. So now, but we fast forward to the future where you're at now. Um, you did mention people promoting your stuff. Um, what is the main product that you are offering online right now? Um, well, my my number one product is my coaching mm-hmm. that I sell. Um, so it's strength and nutrition. Um, so. You, uh, it's pretty full on because I, um, I like to, them to do like daily or every other day check-ins, oh, wow. um, which is even if it's just, it's just so they don't like go off the face of the planet and <laughs> not stick to anything. So yeah, it's just like, yeah. yeah, every day they just email like one thing that, um, they need to improve on and two things that they did well. And then you'll have like a weekly or um, a fortnightly check, like progress check-in. Okay. Um, so that's I do two hundred a month for that. Okay. Um, which it's I think my prices are pretty comparable to 
um, most others yeah. in the fitness industry. Yeah. Um, and then I also have like my lower end offer is my ebook, my goddess training program that I did with Gregor Gallagher, um, kinobody.com, mm-hmm. which is like, a, it's a great way. It's like a, if they sort of want to get started with something, but they don't want to commit to 200 a month and they can just get that one off thing. And then usually from that, like once they get started, they do end up going into the coaching because they want more than, um, like they just want the accountability and mm-hmm. the support. Yeah, for 200 a month, yeah, they want access to the source. So that's kind of a good marketing tool in itself. And how did that happen? Um, for a lot of people that don't know, Gregor Gallagher uh, has a very successful fitness website, kinobody.com, and uh, one of Dell's products is now offered on there as a joint program for women. How, how uh, Del, can you talk about that since I know coaching is your main business, but this is your main product? How did that product come about? Um. Well, Greg, actually, I used to listen to Road to Ripped and yeah. Um, so, yeah, listen to the Road to Ripped podcast and uh, then I got coaching off Greg um, just like a um, one-off um, like training. It was like a 12-week training block mm-hmm. um, and then um, so we would like do coaching calls like Skype and from that he's like, oh, um, you know, do you need any help with your coaching? Like, it would be cool to work together. So, and then he, we, like, talked about that. And then probably, like, a year later, then we brought the book out. So um, he wanted – he had, like, lots of products for males but nothing for females. Yeah. Um, so I think, like, you need a female face. Well, it definitely helps if you're bringing out a female product. So um, yeah. we wrote that together um, because basically what – our philosophies um, were the same, like macros, strength training, um, and intermittent fasting. So it, w- it was easy, like, to work together because we just agreed on basically everything. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So- and he, because he has such a big platform, um, that was great for me. Like, um, and he already had the like the market there, already had the one for it. So it was just a matter of making the product. Oh wow! So that and you said that came about because you were one of his clients, and he knew that through your email interaction. I'm guessing he knew that you had a coaching business you were running as well. Yeah, that's right. Wow, that's fantastic. That's a uh, that's pretty awesome. And how did you decide how to do your coaching business? Like, did you, were you just like two hundred a month, or like have you? change that pricing how did you decide on just how you, the structure initially I would do um, I would just sell like one off training programs so it was like $99 for like a training and a, um, like a meal like I did use in the past I did used to do meal plans yeah. but then I did training and nut- and I realized like you can't just give someone macros if they don't know so that's why I'm like okay I'm going to change coaching because I want to. I don't want to just give someone a training program and then just say off you go. I want. I want to make sure that they know what to do. Yeah. Um, and I like. I want it to be valuable for them. And if they don't know how to stick to it, then like that's the biggest part. Um, and also because I'm, I'm big on like habit change and like sort of the art of coaching and how to make people um, be able to stick to the changes long term. Yeah. And you can't really do that by just one-off plans yeah. um so generally i i'd say like a, a three-month program like minimum mm-hmm. um because it's it's not sort of something that you can teach in a short period yeah you don't want people coming when they're not looking to do the habit forming approach and it sounds like you're kind of going with that like minimum effective dose with your one thing daily checking can you talk about like how did you decide to do that with clients or did you start to do with that? What, sorry? The, the check-ins you talked about where they just give you like one thing every day that they're doing to support the goal. <laughs> yeah, I think it just um, – it, it helps with like the accountability and the support knowing that like, yes, I do want to hear from you every day and I want to know what's going good, what's going bad. And um, I've read a lot on like choice, so um, allowing people to choose the habits that they want to – um, want to do um, helps with adherence yeah. so if I say you have to do this 
there's like a natural resistance. But if, if I say, okay, like out of the things, so they, they tell me one thing that they need to improve every day and two things they did well. So um, out of the one thing that they need to improve, like I'll choose maybe two or three of those and say, okay, these are three things that we've decided that you need to improve. Mm-hmm. Which one do you want to work on this week? Okay. Um, so that's from like if there's something that's coming up every day that they need to work on, then obviously we can like put on put in a strategy um, for that to like maybe um, oh I keep overeating at night oh so maybe like if you um, fast longer in the mo- in the morning and have like your biggest meal later in the day, then you won't be as hungry and you won't overeat at night. Um, so it's just about creating strategies around um, those points that they give me each day. Um, and it just makes them um, always be thinking about their goals. Yeah. So it sounds like kind of focusing in and like chipping away at building this like fitness lifestyle for them. kind of. Yeah. And I've had like, I've had the highest success rate with it, like more than my one-on-one coaching because if you – um, uh, sorry, my in-person coaching at the gym. If you see a client like two, three times a week, the rest of the time it's yeah, sort of what are they doing? not on their mind. But yeah. um, with the online, it's like you always have access to them. And as soon as they have a problem, they can just email you. So nice. it's you very sure. um, beneficial for them. Make sure you're always on your client's mind. Um, I like it. And uh, so with this coaching, um, how did you like – I think I kind of got into this before. How did you decide on the pricing? Did it, did you start it at 200 or how did you figure out where you're going to price it? Uh, I think I, I am um, trying to think. Oh, okay. So, um, Dick Talon's referred me some clients and that's okay. what he charged. Um, well, he charged more, sorry, but, um, that's what his old price was. So I just started, I'm like, well, that makes sense. Like to, cover all your costs and it is a lot of time so um I, yeah I kind of just said it at that and I haven't changed it because um it works and I think like it's basically $50 a week and most people can spend like even for a one-on-one session it's $70 yeah like here in Australia for a one-on-one session training so $50 a week for like full access to someone yeah. um, is like pretty reasonable yeah. um, I think that um, it's a it's a lot more reasonable for most people that they want a training program and they want accountability but they just don't have the money to spend on a trainer every week mm-hmm. yeah I didn't realize that that makes sense too because you kind of had that price you're already charging for the in-person training to compare it to so that's, yeah. that's kind of a good benchmark. And how do you like it? I mean, uh, for a lot of people, I always wonder, is it like overwhelming having all these people or is it kind of like you like it? It's like you always have your group with you. I, I love it. I do love it because it's <laughs> nice. it's like people just get so excited to email you like yeah. their um, progress photos and mm-hmm. um, you just get such good feedback from people that start out with no confidence and yeah. basically have no hope of like they just think that they they're not going to achieve it and then you give them that like build up that confidence and they see results and it's just like a snowball effect like they just get better better Mm -hmm. and then you get more clients from them because like if you get getting good results with your existing clients and um they're going to stay with you and they're going to refer you more clients as well so yeah yeah, that word of mouth traffic definitely helps. That's true though about the emailing them. I remember the first time I had used an online trainer with a complete human performance like Alex Viata. I remember emailing him questions and like as soon as I'd get it, I'd be like, oh, I want to see what he says. Like way too excited about it. But uh, let's see. The what... other thing I want to um, start doing, mm-hmm. I, I want to do YouTube videos that answer all the questions because I get the same questions all the time. Yeah. And it's it would be good to just link a YouTube video yeah. <laughs> instead of having to rewrite or um, like copy and paste answers. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, if if you're doing a blog um, and writing, not everyone likes to read like 2,000 word blog posts. So yeah. um, doing video content as well is really 
um, valuable. Yeah, I think definitely. I saw one uh, one coach. I forget who. He actually would do videos on common questions, and he was talking about how when he would get questions from clients, he'd be like, "Check out this video and just link it." So he just sent out like, "Check this video." Like he'd know which video to give them because he had like this whole library of just like common questions. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be definitely that'd be definitely cool. Um, yeah, and I've done. Um, I think I've done five. Podca- I've done side quest podcast, road to ripped, muscle for life. Um, Brandon Epstein's Entrepreneur Fitness Evidence Radio and I'm doing Evil Sugar Radio this month as well so I oh, have wow. all those that I can just link people to um, if they want to know um, what I'm about as well if they just want a bit more information I can just be like check out all these podcasts that I've done <laughs> it's on one of them uh, yeah oh wait Evidence Evidence Radio it's Army Leg or yeah Okay. Yeah, I just talked to him. Like, it is. That's awesome. Uh, oh yeah, cool. yeah. Um, Ami okay. and I met. I think I added him initially because I he was on Alan Aragon's page, and mm-hmm. then I had him on Facebook. And then I when I competed in Vegas, um, mm-hmm. at, um, Fitness America weekend, he was there. So we trained together, and um, oh, nice. then mm-hmm. he's he. I was living in New York for like two months. Um, just gone. Mm-hmm. And he, now he's there. So, um, yeah, he was a good person to, um, like, get some insight of, like, how the, all the online stuff works as well. Yeah. Yeah, he's such a fantastic writer, too. He was actually talking a lot about how he developed his writing because he just is, like, a content machine. Yeah, wow. he, he actually helped me when <laughs> I was um, trying to get better at writing and gave me... I'm really big on audio books because I travel a lot and like on the plane or commuting, it's good to have audio books. Um, so he gave me some recommendations um, on how to improve my writing. Um, so I think the main one I remember is um, on writing well. Yeah. Um, I'm, no, put that one in I'm trying to I'm trying to look through my Audible, but <laughs> I have like a hundred. Audible books, so I I don't know who it is, but yeah, um, yeah, I I try to do a, a book, an audio book, and a physical book, at least like one every two weeks, okay, um, because that is huge on improving your writing and not just staying in the same genre. Like I I'll do I'll like fiction, nonfiction, um, business. Um, like motivational, fitness, um, I'm into neuroscience and philosophy and stoicism oh. at the moment. <laughs> oh, that's serious. I'm actually <clears throat> in this one at the moment. Let's see. It's like a, a neuroscience okay. one on like the different that hemispheres of the brain. <laughs> the moss is emissary. That's some deep reading. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to have to put that one in so people can check it out. Okay. Yeah, and you mentioned that. You said this before the call. Um, so reading, you're saying, has helped your content a lot then, just reading and listening to audiobooks and just learning yeah. more then? Yeah, learning more. And um, if you read good writing, then it is going to make you write better. So, And kind of find the style that you um, like to read and then – that will help you um, know like what kind of writing style you want. Like you can go with um, something like John Romanello. Like he has a very like casual tone, and um, you know he's into like um, alternative sort of music and like Harry Potter and sort of goes for, like from the nerd fitness type of thing um, and stuff that will resonate with his audience um so or you can go like more army leg is more i guess formal not as casual but still he's good at storytelling so Mm -hmm. it helps um engage the reader yeah his his stuff is like he ties in so much information he he sources everything it's like so so he's yeah he's he's very detailed and yeah john romanillo though he's just uh yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's just always been a talented writer, but his writing is definitely something for people to aspire to, but it's really pretty yeah. fantastic. He, um, he's the one that made me want to write because mm-hmm. he was at that conference, and initially I was like, I don't I don't want to write content. Like, 
I'm not a writer, I'm a trainer, <laughs> but yeah. um, it's so important to write because how is anyone going to know who you are um, online if you don't have any, like, you can just do video content if you really hate writing, but um, it's going to feel uncomfortable at first writing, and the best way to get good at it is just, like, set an alarm every day and write no matter what, even in... So I, I would do, like, midday, I'd set an alarm and I would write. Even if I had no idea what, what to write, I would just go find a piece of writing that I like and just copy it. Like, just copy it word for word just to get into that habit of, like, it's just about showing up. So if you're, yeah. if you're there and you have to write something, it just gets you, like, comfortable and sort of gets the momentum going and then you can, even if you're copying something or, like, paraphrasing something and then you start writing your own content it's just about getting into that habit so it's just automatic yeah kind of like warming up it's almost like just getting in the gym and yeah yeah the hardest bit is just like getting pen to paper <laughs> yes yeah army actually talked a lot about that too just how he like his habit makes like a job yeah um, so when you started i know a lot of people they're like switching either transitioning a job or thinking about leaving one Maybe this doesn't apply. It sounds like you kind of already were doing what you're doing online in person, but did you have any, like, reservations? Uh, was there anything you were worried about when you were like, I'm going to try to put more of my time and effort into building an online presence? Uh, I guess I I do really like being in, like, the social gym environment um, mm -hmm. compared to sitting at a computer all day. Yeah. Um, I think... Though with the one-on-one -on -one training, it's it's always consistent. Like someone, even if you're charging up front, like people go on holidays, people um, get sick, pe like get pregnant, and then they don't train with you anymore. Like yeah. there's always the inconsistency with the one-on-one -on -one training. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas the online training, it's um, it's more affordable. They can't just not show up because. <laughs> Like it's yeah, it's it's yeah. always it's on their computer, so <laughs> there's no excuses. Um, yeah. so it's actually like initially I was like, oh no, like how am I gonna make money online? Like it's, it, I just didn't know anyone that was doing it, but from meeting more and more people, it's became more obvious that it's actually um it's a safer way than um working in a like working in a gym here. We pay rent. Okay. I don't know how it works um, over in America, but you p pay like a certain amount a week and then you charge what you want for your clients. Um, so okay. it's it's like if you don't train clients, you're like at a loss. Still paying rent. Yeah. yeah so, okay. which is good because um, I know like a couple of gyms I know in America, like they just get a set amount and you can never make more than that. But... I, I think yeah. I charge out of everyone at my gym, I think me and my coach who works there charge the most out of everyone um, because a lot of the other guys don't really know, like they've just been doing it, doing it a while and they just ch charge low because they think that will get them more clients, I think. But you yeah. get um, charging more gives you better quality client clients and people that are more committed and makes them realize like, like if someone's charging thirty dollars and you're charging seventy dollars, they're like, "Oh, well, she must be better then." <laughs> it's yeah. like see value. <laughs> yeah, it's like the premium version. Wow, that's pretty ridiculous. So, what? I mean, this is kind of like just personal interest. Why wouldn't those people start charging more when they see you with all those clients? Are they just? It is just trainers that come and go. The people that start for a while and leave, like, or. Uh, I I think like people are scared to put their prices up. Okay. And they're yeah. like they're scared to say this is how much I'm worth, um, yeah. and just initially like worried to like ask us. And if you've been charging that much, mm. like even putting it up a little bit, they feel they feel guilty. But at the end of the day, like you're if you're providing a good service, and if if you um, think that you're worth it, then you should be charging that much because yeah. you've got to make money. <laughs> like, 
Like, yeah. you, you're not going to yeah. last. Like, a lot of them, um, they have to work another job because they're not making enough money. But um, if you're charging enough, like, you, and you are you only have that job, then you're going to put, like, 100% into it because um, you sort of have, like, a monomaniacal focus on getting, like, one one thing done rather than, like, going to another job and having distractions. Yeah, you can't really do either of them good. Yeah. Um, so when you were getting started, I know you mentioned already, like, a few fantastic resources. Um, I know changing the game, so that was a – that was a convention in Vegas. Uh, Dick Talens, you met him. I'm not. I'm not sure if you mentioned how you met him, but he's a resource. And then Gregor Gallagher. What other resources? Were there any blogs or anything you used like as resources to learn about internet marketing or blogging or what other resources? I did can't. You use? It's, it's kind of breaking up. I didn't hear the last part of the question. Oh, what other resources did you use to learn about blogging or internet marketing? Um. Okay. So, I. I wrote down all the podcasts I listened to somewhere. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> um, I wrote down, like, I listened to a, a lot of um, fitness ones as well, but um, the One You Feed podcast, okay. um, which has, like, business, just, like, successful people, um, business, mindset, motivation, all kinds of stuff. Um, Accidental mm-hmm. Creative by Todd Henry. So his, his books are really good and his podcasts. The Tim Ferriss Show podcast yeah. and then the Lewis Howe School of Greatness, they're probably the best ones to listen to um, in terms of like motivation and like um, business and other successful people. So I think a big thing is just find a mentor or find someone um, who is doing what you want to do and see what they do, see what content that they put out and um, get inspired that way. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely those podcasts. And then I have a few like Kindle books um, that I that are just on like how to how to make money blogging or how, how to blog yeah. and how to write content, those sort of things. I go I subscribe to Buck Books. Have you heard of that? Which one? Buck Books. I don't think so. It's what like, is it exactly? I think it's like books for a dollar um, that are okay. or so, sometimes they're free. Um, so a lot of my Kindle books are off that and you get like a daily email with like what ones are free that day. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I had that was similar was like Scribd. It's like eight ninety nine for like an ebook subscription. You get a bunch of different, I think like uh, libraries worth. I had that for a little while. But, but yeah. books is good because it's just like you just subscribe to that email list. Like there's no charge and then they just email you every day. Um, like a lot of the books are just like a limited time they're one dollar or a limited time they're free because they've just come out um, okay. and they have like it's on all different topics so sometimes it's on blogging sometimes it's on cooking so, so you, it's like it's good if you want to like Everything. start building your um, audio book library <laughs> okay cool well I'll have to check that one out too then um okay and then those resources that you did get in person um uh, what would you recommend for someone maybe if they don't have the opportunity? Like, I, I'm not sure exactly how you did meet Dick Talons. I, I did hear the one about Greg, oh, yeah. so what would you suggest with, with people Dick, do? He actually, I actually had him on Facebook from, um, I, I think he must have, I must have listened to a, like a podcast or something. And so I added him and he posted something about uh, looking for two people um, to do like a sponsored business mentorship. So, okay. and um, he interviewed a bunch of people and then we did Skype interviews and me and another guy got it so they set up our blogs um, wow. and then when I went to New York I met him there after I'd been doing that so he sort of gave me all the resources and um, I said networking was a big thing so um, wherever yeah. I go it's like he knew fitness people so he's like oh you're going to um, LA oh, wow. um, go train at Fitwall with this person um, and intro me to the owner um, or like meet this person and um, like he would just like intro me to people he got me the other th- good thing was sponsorships so um, yeah. if you have a sponsor they're gonna like cross promote you as well um, so mm-hmm. people like that I'm um, like he hooked me up with Quest and they sponsored top competitions that I did 
um, like uh, yeah. social media competitions, they sent the winners prize packs and stuff like that. So it's always good to um, have someone who knows a lot of people and who's going to um, put you in contact with the right yeah. people. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty fantastic that you got those connections. But it sounds like in both cases, it was uh, your own doing. I mean, you reached out to Greg for the training and then you reached out when he posted that Yeah, so it's just a matter so, of networking yeah. and not being afraid to ask questions. Awesome. Okay. So would you just suggest then looking out for those type of things and maybe just reaching out to people on social media yeah. and seeing if they can get like mentorship of some kind? Or? Not even necessarily asking for like mentorship. Like if if you pay mentorship, that's definitely valuable because, um, you know, it's mutually beneficial. Um, but mm -hmm. even just asking like specific questions, like I even I get it now. But if you ask like a g general generic question, don't expect to get mm -hmm. a good answer. But um, yeah. if there's something specific that you want to know and you've like read that person's content first and then say like ask them something in relation to that don't just ask them oh how do I like start a blog or how do I get yeah. good at um, writing uh, how do I get good at like online coaching XYZ, like ask them something more topic. specific and if you're putting in yep. the effort first and then you ask them and they can see that then they're like most people are happy to help you just have to ask but um just as long as you're putting in the effort first. Okay, showing you're not just wasting their time, basically. Um, so we talked about expenses, mostly your time writing. Um, takeaways like so far in like your journey you've had getting started online and now having some products and coaching. Like, what what are your biggest takeaways or like pieces of advice you could give people or trying to look to maybe do the same thing like what you're doing? Uh, I think know who your target audience is and be authentic. So um, if you don't know who your customer is, it's going to be hard to know how to tell your content and um, be authentic, um, especially when you write. If, you're, if you feel uncomfortable and like you're exposed when you're writing something, it's probably going to be a good piece. If it's something generic yeah. and um, you don't sort of put yourself into it, then it's usually doesn't go um like pick up as well um so yeah, yeah auth authenticity up. is important yeah i've heard so many people talk about that too like having to have some like skin in the game in terms of what they're yeah. talking about in their articles yeah and like most of your stuff been like that it's like being vul vulnerable um like you, yeah you've got kind of got to feel exposed um, and people see that and they appreciate it because um, a lot of people are sort of very fake online. So when you see something that's like yeah. very honest and um, it resonates with you, then you're more likely to, you know, want to find out who that person is and what they have to offer. Yeah, I was actually surprised when I went on Ice Cream Gal because I only saw your work through. Uh, your original bootcamp site and then other people that have blogged with you I guess are like oh Del Pharrell, like bikini model like competitor so like I had no idea you even had like struggled with like eating or anything like that until I went on your personal blog the so other thing that I um I'm sure that, helps a lot that I haven't talked about is photography like your qu mm. having good quality photos um, for your articles and on your site is really important so um, I was lucky because I did my fitness comp, so I had um, photos from that. Um, like you get a free photo shoot the day before um, with the federation that I did. Then you've got all your photos from on the day. Um, and I did um, a photo shoot for some clothing companies, so um, Tahira Active Collection. So it was yeah, oh, wow. so the Tahira Collection, and then they have like a brought out an active wear range so I did one for them and then a gym wear range um, for Brook City Villain um, so ha having good quality photos and also doing that promo work for those companies got me a lot of um, traffic back to my site as well um, but yeah if you have oh, like yeah. really nice imagery and you like really think about the design and like what you how you want your page to feel um, 
because if you have like shitty photos or generic photos and people don't see you on the site then um, it's going to be harder for you to get that return traffic um, because you know if something like is really visually appealing people are going to come back so don't just think about writing good content think about like the overall look um, of your page so I think like mostly for my photography I like my photos for my Instagram because I get a lot of clients from Instagram as well so I just make sure like okay. I, I know how I want to nice. look and come across um, on my social media so I make sure that it's sort of like congruent yeah yeah and where is like where would you say is like the biggest for you are you getting most traffic from Instagram now or just from your like advertisements you've done with some of the um, companies you've at the moment for? most of my traffic is from I keep getting people saying oh I saw your stuff on Pinterest but I'm not on Pinterest but apparently some of my articles really? are on there oh, okay. um, but yeah apparently yeah. Pinterest is like one of the like fastest wow. growing forms of social media um, and yeah. The so I had one of the journalists from Kansas City Fitness Summit. She wrote an article for Women's Health on my transformation story. Um, so mm -hmm. sh that story then got picked up by Daily Mail in New York, and then the Australian Daily Mail rang me and interviewed me. So they both did the story. Mm -hmm. Then Red Book Mac emailed me and they did the story. Then I saw it. I kept getting emails saying, oh, I saw your article on Body Rock TV. So I went to their Facebook and it's wow. on their website as well. Um, and then I just Googled myself the other day and it's like in it's like in Italian Jeez. on some other website and translated into like a few different languages. So um, yeah. at the moment, like that's why I haven't gone back just to the gym. It. It's just, it's been crazy. Like the yeah. amount, I have a waiting list now for my online coaching. So... Too much stuff. Look at that. You go on vacation for four and a half months and like people are banging yeah. down your door. God, that's fantastic. So if people do want to find you, what uh what are like your current offerings, um, products, coaching and where can you find this stuff? Like handle and Twitter, URL, um, like well if you icecreamgal.com yeah. is my blog. Um mm -hmm. and in, I'm pretty active like on Instagram so because glutes is my Instagram and that has my contact for like my email and stuff for um, coaching and then Facebook is okay. um, just ice cream gal or it's facebook.com forward slash do you even ice cream <laughs> Um, nice. But yeah, that's like my social media. Wow, because glutes and you even ice cream. My social media awesome. is like the best place to find me at the moment because I'm actually redoing my website. Yeah. I've gone, I actually mm. um, went to a design conference, Sex, Drugs and Helvetica the other week. So it's inspired me to like um, do a redesign of my website. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. delfarrell.com yeah. will be all, all new soon. <laughs> completely new soon to come and then uh what was the url for your product link do you have like a full um, it's, url for it's ketobody.com you know, forward slash because glutes awesome okay and that's where they can get your actual that's a training yeah, program yeah. correct okay cool well thank you though i appreciate it i appreciate you coming on um i'm just gonna cut the recording and then i'll get with you after if that's cool okay great thanks for having me yeah definitely let me pause it